Hi, this is Mike Rowland, the president and founder of Impact Interactions, a leading social media agency and consultancy based in Chicago in the United States. In part one of this presentation, we focused on looking at the research that has come out during 2011 about social media for B2B companies. Those are ones that sell primarily business to business. We also looked at how you can use that research to understand how to use social media for your organization in order to solve your organization's pain points. In part two, we're going to look at several companies who are doing just that through published case studies and an example from Impact Interactions itself, we'll see how you can utilize social media in a manner which generates real economic value to your firm. So let's get started. Intuit is a US-based software company that provides the very popular QuickBooks accounting program for small and mid-sized businesses. In our view, Intuit is a leader in using social media for a B2B company. They've gone above and beyond the checklist of having a YouTube account, having a Twitter account, etc., and have really focused on meeting the needs of their audience and then engaging with them. Intuit has really demonstrated that you do not need to focus solely on pushing content out on social sites, but you must have an engagement strategy to work with your audience to accumulate real economic value. Intuit utilized an integrated approach to using Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube to first get the attention of small business owners and then to educate them. But it wasn't as simple as just pushing marketing content. Instead, Intuit went to its audience and asked the members to share their experience through stories. By showing that they as a company wanted to engage with their customers, and small business owners, their targeted audience, into it reached their audience passion for their business and activated them to provide content about their businesses in order to make this a success. And the results? Well, the results from a traffic and behavior standpoint were fabulous. A million visits across their social media sites. 90% of the buzz generated on social sites about this program was positive. 2,000 small business owners almost submitted their stories to Intuit. In just this one social effort, Intuit was able to generate almost 2,000 contacts while also understanding something about their businesses and their needs before ever contacting them or marketing to them. Is there value in obtaining almost 2,000 contacts? Yes, absolutely there is. ShipServe works in an industry that you normally wouldn't think of for B2B social media and communities, that is, maritime services. Yet they faced the same issues that many of you do. They needed to build awareness for their brand. They wanted to identify potential contacts and qualify leads. And then being able to understand their needs, sell to them. Sounds easy, right? Marketing 101. But now think about the audience for this company. It's not a bunch of young kids surfing and talking on Facebook. It's not a group of tech-savvy engineers or early adopters. Yet ShipServe was able to try something new in the industry and succeed. With only a small budget, ShipServe developed a process to use social tools like blogs, Twitter, a LinkedIn group, and online community forums to provide information to its audience. They utilized search engine optimization techniques to understand the keywords for planning as well as for page optimization. Because remember that most executives start their due diligence using search. The idea was to build a content calendar of issues that were important to its audience, then use social methods and techniques to deliver the information in a very cost effective manner. The offering? 
an integrated content engine that took advantage of the network effect to disseminate key information at a low cost. The information coupled with an optimized website worked to educate potential clients on their time with valuable information in a delivery method that they desired and that they selected, whether it was video, reading a blog, going to Facebook, following ShipServe on Twitter, etc. But it's the results that were impressive. Think about it. For a group of people who are not tech savvy, who are not early adopters, ShipServe was able to generate tremendous results. By establishing a LinkedIn group as its hub, building relevant followers, meaning followers in the maritime industry, on Twitter, and generating views for its video, leads passed to its sales team from social media sources increased by 400%. Those leads had potential sales figures, in, uh, potential sales in the six figure range. But just as importantly, by using social media methods and applications, ShipServe, a relatively small company, saved over 80,000 pounds in media costs by doing it themselves. Does that have value? Absolutely. Let's turn our attention to a large global company, Cisco. This case study is courtesy of Lysandra Brill, one of our clients, and it's a quick overview of a presentation that she has given several times to demonstrate just how powerful social media can be in new product releases. So in 2008, Cisco decided to launch a new aggregate service router. But by using a totally online launch, something that had never been done before at Cisco, Lysandra's team generated 9,000 people to attend the virtual event versus the average of 100 for a traditional launch event. The social world lit up and took notice, and so did the mainstream press. But just as impressive by their calculations, the online launch, which relied heavily upon social media, cost one-sixth the cost of a traditional event and saved Cisco over $100,000. Think about that for a minute. If you could simultaneously reach a larger audience for your product or service while saving your firm money, would you do it? Of course you would. Social media has game-changing value. But now let's talk about an Impact Interactions case study. Impact Interactions, while providing consulting advice, also uses that same methodology for its own account. We use search engine AdWords marketing on Google. We have a Twitter account, we're active in LinkedIn groups, and we have our own blog. So let's talk about a particular case study involving our company. Our company offers social media monitoring or listening services as they're called now. But way back when, a couple of years ago, social media monitoring and listening was new. We wanted to get the word out that we were offering this service. So we went and we bought AdWords ad copy. You can see it here. It's the social media monitoring second ad. We also started tweeting about it. Then we wrote a blog post, as you can see at the bottom, called Social Media Monitoring Tools. We're off to see the wizard, where we talked about what was good and bad and the limitations of the social media marketing tools or monitoring tools, excuse me, that were on the market at that time. The idea was to use an integrated effort to educate our potential target audience that this service was offered by Impact Interactions. And we generated some fairly significant results. We had very good AdWord impressions and 17 actual clicks. That comes out to be a click-through rate of 3.5% 
and it only cost us seventy-one dollars. Writing the blog and then placing it on nine LinkedIn groups that were targeted towards marketing, social media marketing, as well as other online marketing groups allowed us to generate 20 additional comments in these groups which we then used as an opportunity to engage with people that we had not met before about social media monitoring without really going into too much about our services unless asked. In terms of Twitter we were able to use our our followers at the time which was about a little over a thousand and 79 of them started retweeting about this particular blog post. When we looked at our referrals, what we found was that we had 136 people come to our site from LinkedIn groups just by placing these little snippets of content which pointed back to the blog. Twitter brought us 71 referrals to our site. Over time, we had 226 reads of this blog post with five additional user comments right on the post itself. But just as importantly, using our click tracking, we saw that clicks to our social media monitoring service page from our blog on social media monitoring numbered 38, meaning 38 individuals clicked to that page after reading the blog. And the results? Well, we had four people submit a contact us form regarding the social media monitoring service page. And those contracts had a potential of plus or minus United States dollars, $50,000 for small, short-term, relevant social media monitoring or listening program. Was it worth it? Absolutely the time and the cost was minimal when you compare it to what the potential reward of doing this was. So let's take a quick look because measurement is something that is extremely important yet in many case studies and in many talks that we go to basically ignored. So let's talk about these cases very quickly. Ship serve 400 percent increase in leads, 80,000 pounds in cost savings. The Cisco router case study, $100,000 in cost savings. Our study, $50,000 in new revenue potential, all from social media. And here's a quote from another of our clients, NetApp. We did a value analysis for them using not only their community and social media and website metrics, but their CRM system as well. And what we found was that active members using the community to interact and engage, that's the active members, controlled hundreds of millions of dollars in sales revenue for NetApp over a six month period. The active partners who were contributing in the community delivered over half a billion dollars in partner-owned sales revenue over the same period. For a company that's doing less than $5 billion in revenue, those numbers are staggering. Yet it shows that people want to use social media and online communities as part of the business-to-business -business buying process. But think about it for a minute. Because what stops you from measuring your social media results in economic terms? We utilize a methodology for our clients that we think helps simplify and yet at the same time provide focus to management, executives, and practitioners. We start with traffic. It's really the baseline. It's how many. It's how many visitors, how many page views, all of that good stuff. But what really starts to get interesting is what are those numbers doing? What are those people doing? What's the behavior? And that's our second large group. What do they do and who are they? How many page views per visit are they getting? What are they doing in terms of registrations? What are they doing in terms of downloads? What are they doing in terms of uploads of content, etc.? And lastly, value. Value is the question and the topic 
that senior management cares most about. What are we getting for our money? Are we generating revenues? Are we getting more leads? Are we lowering our support costs? If you think about reporting and you think about methodology in three large groupings of traffic behavior and value for your measurement, you will have an easier time moving beyond the traditional, well, we've got 10,000 followers on Twitter and move towards real value because traffic and behavior do not equal value, but they do help to drive it. Where you are in the social media life cycle determines where to focus your measurement. Our model is simple. There's low maturity, which is where member-to-member -member interactions are slow to take place. There's not a lot of contributions from your audience. They're really consuming more content, and they're, they're counting on you to provide it. Middle maturity is when you've taught your members, and your members are more comfortable now with interacting with you. It's inconsistent, but it's growing. You still play a role. You're still pushing a lot of the content. But now you're seeing your content being retweeted. Now you're seeing your blog content used in other people's blogs. And people are coming to your blogs and starting to comment. High maturity means that member-to-member -member interactions are now the majority rather than the minority. There's a higher percentage of people now who are contributing content to your social applications and your social initiatives than in the past. You will still have a larger percentage who are consuming, but the percentage of consumers is declining versus the percentage of contributors overall and over time. External members accelerate your message through their networks. It's the amplification effect. It's the social network effect. By taking your content and putting it on their blogs and using it for tw their Twitter and their LinkedIn groups, and pointing people back to your site. Now remember, it's not the traffic that determines the maturity of an offering, but the behavior of members who interact with each other. So, in low maturity, you're really focused on traffic for the most part with some behavior, because really what you're trying to do is build audience share. So you want to follow key metrics like visits and visitors. You want to look at the referring sites. You want to look at the geographic location of visits. You want to know what top pages are, where they're entering, where they're exiting, and then follower and friends counts. Because this type of traffic analysis tells you how effective your outreach and third-party social media efforts are in driving visits to your main site and how effective your content is in meeting your member audience needs. It also tells you what content is not popular. So pay attention to your metrics at this stage, but really focus in on the traffic metrics. In the middle maturity, now you really want to start looking at not only the traffic, but get more into the behavior metrics. It's what the visitors do once you get them to your site you're going to start looking for more maturity from your audience in terms of how they're using your offering. You want to look at ratios, not just counts. You want to look at activity. You want to look at the page views per visit. You want to look at content added per visitor, repeat visitors, retweets, mentions, plus ones added in Google+, etc. Comments added per entry. What you want to see is you want to see the percentage of your audience in social media that activates for a particular topic. Because behavior metrics tell you how effective your offering is in converting visitors who are very passive to registered members or to people who unmask themselves and now you know who they are. It also tells you how interesting is your content in terms of the consumption. It also fulfills the need to understand if members are building your site into their routine. And for B2B, that's very important. And lastly, it tells you how healthy your community is from an engagement standpoint. It's only when you get to high maturity that really what happens is you can start seeing the links between the behaviors of the members, of your followers, of your audience equaling economic value because what we talk about when we we talk about value and what we mean is that value equals economic value you have to be able to put a dollar a pound a euro sign against what you are doing 
in order to prove the value. This is extremely difficult to measure until your members really start interacting with each other and the site on a regular basis. It's almost impossible to do if you base it solely on social media metrics alone. Yet how many times and how many case studies have you read where the total number of followers or fans on Facebook or likes on Facebook is multiplied by some denominator, some number of value to come up with a value statistic. Those are false statistics. It's only when they do something of business value for your company that you should be putting a dollar sign or a euro sign or pound sign against it. Examples include your purchase frequency of active members versus your average customer the purchase amount of active members versus your average customers and you can tell who these active members are by following them by understanding where they came from did they come from Twitter did they come from your blog did they come from Facebook did they come from LinkedIn or via Deo or YouTube but you can also measure the cost of a lead generated through social media versus traditional direct mail or telemarketing efforts as well and these are all valid so again, when you think of measurement, it's easiest to think of it in three large groups, traffic, behavior, and value. That's what we teach our clients to do, and hopefully this will help you. So I want to thank you for taking the time to watch our video. Our team is here and ready to help you understand any of the case studies that we've just gone over or the research or to just answer your social media questions. Feel free to contact me, Mike Rowland, at the telephone number below, 312-578-8070, to discuss how we can help you to improve your social media and generate real economic value for your organization. Thank you.